left with the problem of how do we transfer the manufacturing overhead that we actually incurred into work in process. So let's, uh, let's just show ourselves what we've done so far. In our manufacturing over costs in the journal entries we've done, we've noticed that we've entered actual costs here on the debit side. Actual costs went here. However, when it leaves, it will be applied amounts that leave. Not the actual amounts. The actual amounts go in, the applied amounts leave. So we can see that manufacturing overhead is what we would call a clearing account. We collect actual costs on one side, we apply them on the other side. How do we apply them? We've already talked about this. We use the predetermined overhead rate times the actual activity level on each job. So we've already done that. But let's do an example. And when I say an example, I'm giving you a small example. The real learning, and I can't stress this enough, the real learning comes in doing the exercises at the end of the chapter over and over again until you get it. That's the real learning. This is just an introduction, these videos here. So let's say that we have a, a pre, uh, our predetermined overhead rate is six bucks and we are, are incurred 15,000 machine hours. 10,000 of them were for job A, 5,000 were for job B. That's our predetermined overhead rate. So what happens here? Well, six times 15 is 90,000. So when we transfer out manufacturing overhead, 90,000 will go into work in process. 90,000 will leave manufacturing overhead. That's the journal entry to transfer amounts from manufacturing overhead into work in process based on an applied amount from our predetermined overhead rate. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Here's our work in process account. $90,000 goes in. Now that $90,000 gets split up between the jobs like this. Notice that those machine hours were for different jobs. Job A had 10,000 hours at six bucks, so job A will get 60,000 of that 90,000. And we're told that job B has 5,000 of those 15 actual 15,000 actual hours incurred, so job B will get 5,000 by the $6 predetermined overhead rate, we'll get 30,000 of that 90. So of that 90, 60 is in A, 30 is in B. So they're all in jobs, right? Now somebody looking at this may say, I see a problem. I see a problem here. And you should see a problem. What if the actual manufacturing overhead costs that you incur do not equal what you apply? You get to the end of the year and you say, hang on a second here. We incurred a million dollars in actual costs, but we only applied 800000 Well, What do we do now? Well, if the actual amount that you incurred is greater than what you applied, you've under-applied, haven't you? We have the situation where we have under-applied overhead. We should have charged more. But you may end the year where your actual costs are less than what you applied. In other words, you applied too much. You over-applied. How do we solve that problem? Listen, when you're estimating, your actual and your estimates are never going to be exact. You're always going to be over or under. The problem that you come with, the solution is, what do you do with that problem? Well, we're going to cover that next. But before we go, we have one more arrow to deal with, this work in process to finished goods. So let's deal with that. When it leaves work in process, it enters finished goods. So finished goods inventory increases, work in process decreases. That's simple enough, right? And we get this number from the schedule of costs of goods manufactured. That number comes from that schedule. So that's why we do a schedule of cost of goods manufactured to get the number that leaves work in process and enters finished goods. When we sell something from finished goods, it goes to sales. This is a tricky entry. Listen to me carefully. This is a tricky entry. Number one, we increase accounts receivable to record the sale. Increase accounts receivable to record the sale. That's part one. Part two is you, we're, since something is leaving finished goods inventory, 
it must go into something. It goes into cost of goods sold so that we can decrease the finished goods inventory. Think of this as a two-part transaction. This whole transaction, break it down into two parts. All right, that's a tricky one because you're, you're combining both balance sheet accounts and income statement accounts. So, let's look at how we take care of this under-applied and over-applied situation that we have. Let's start with the, um, the under-applied because that's the easiest one to deal with. Let's get our T account up here for manufacturing overhead and look at what that situation looks like. Remember, our actual costs enter in as debits. Our applied costs leave as credits. So they enter in as, as actual cost and then we apply it. Well, at the end of the year, we may or may not have uh, uh, an equal amount. If our actual is greater than what we applied, we under-applied. We actually incurred a million dollars. We only applied 800,000. What do we do with that other 200,000, right? We underapplied. When we say underapplied, what we're really saying is too little was applied. Too little. We incurred a million. We only applied 800,000. Too little was applied. Our estimates were off. Sorry. But what do we got to do with it now, right? Well, in this case, for underapplied, it's very simple. There's only one thing you do. You close it out to cost of goods sold. Simple as that. Now, somebody may be saying, okay, well, how do I know what the debit and what the credit is? Well, it's very simple. Actual is greater than applied. So we have to have a credit entry to offset the debit entry because actual enters in on the debit side. So there's our manufacturing overhead with a credit entry to get to a balance of zero. Why? Because if actual was greater than applied we would have a balance on this side of the T account. So that's how you can keep it straight in your head, right? Well, what if it's the other way around? Now, this is messy. This is just messy. There's no easy way to say it. If, you, if you're struggling with this part of the course or this part of the chapter, yeah, everyone does. It's messy. So, again, actual comes in here, applied leaves there. In this scenario, we're saying if actual is less than applied, we applied too much. And if we applied too much, that means we're overstating our inventory. And that's not good. Regulators don't mind if you understate your inventory, but they hate it if you overstate your inventory because you're telling your investors you have more assets than what you really have. And that's misleading. It does not follow the, the, the conservativity principle of being conservative. So too much has been applied. So we need to reduce the balance of the inventory accounts. Specifically, we need to reduce the balance in our work in process. We need to reduce the balance in our finished goods and some of that finished goods was sold. So we got to go back and reduce it in cost of goods sold. And we reduce it in proportion to the manufacturing overhead that is in the ending balances in those inventory accounts. Now you may hear those words uh, and see them being written down. Going, I, it's too abstract. I can't actually see it in my head what this means. Don't worry. When you get to the exercises, you'll see what it means. But I'm going to do my best to try to describe it to you now. So let's, let's think about how costs flow out. They flow out and they all, all of it, all these, all these dollar amounts, 100% of it has to go into work in process, right? 100% of everything we applied went into work in process. From work in process, some of that, let's say X percent, goes into finished goods. Of that X percent, some of that Y percent went into cost of goods sold. So even though it all starts in work and process, some goes to finished goods, and of the stuff that went to finished goods, some of it goes to cost of goods sold. So that helps us out a bit. So manufacturing overhead, there's the amount to close out whatever whatever the uh, uh, over applied is. Now work and process, we have to reduce by, well, a hundred percent went in less what left, the X percent 
less the y percent that went at the cost of goods sold times whatever the over applied amount is. Remember, it's a percentage of what we're closing out. And I know it's very difficult in words to convey this, but all we're doing is we're if if we've if we've over applied by twenty thousand dollars, we're just trying to figure out of this twenty thousand, what percent do we do we use to reduce work in process? We might find that well, of all the work in process applied, fifty percent of it is still in work in process. Okay, so only ten thousand. That's the over applied amount. That's the twenty thousand. So we're just multiplying a percentage by that over applied amount to close it out. This is, if you don't have a good computer system, if the company you're working at does not have a good computerized system that can track costs, this is almost impossible to do at the end of the year. Almost impossible to do if you have to retrace it uh, uh, on paper. So uh, there is an easier way for smaller companies that don't have the money to invest in these large, large systems. And, And this actually is the easiest way. What we want to do is we want to look at our ending balances. Let's never mind about how much work in, pro, work in process uh, uh, got increased by manufacturing. Let's just look at the ending balance of work in process. And we'll make a note of what that ending balance is. We'll look at the ending balance in finished goods inventory. Whatever it ends with. And we'll record that. Then we'll go to cost of goods sold and look at how much was cost of goods sold. From that, though, we have to take out our beginning balance of work in process and finished goods. Why are we taking out the beginning balance? Well, because that was already taken care of. That didn't happen during the course of the year. The beginning balances is what we started with. They did not. So no manufacturing overhead from this year was transferred into the beginning balance, so we take it out. We add those three up. And that number will equal the total amount of manufacturing overhead that was applied. It will equal that amount. Because if you think about it logically, that total amount of dollars in work in process is either in our ending balance in work in process, it's in our ending balance in finished goods, or or it's in cost of goods sold. Now what we do is we add up that dollar amount. This total is 100%. We take whatever percentage the ending balance is of that total, whatever percentage the finished goods ending balance is of that total, and C. And A, B, plus C must equal 100%. And 100% is the total of manufacturing overhead applied. It just is. That's, that's the way it works out. So now what we do is we take our over-applied amount and we reduce work in process by A% percent of that over-applied amount. We reduced finished goods inventory by B percent of that over-applied amount. And we reduced cost of goods sold by C percent of that over-applied amount. Now, the more exact way to do it is the above method. This is the more inexact way to do it. However, it's the cheaper way to do it if you don't, if you don't have the systems in place to do the tracking yourself. You'll see this better in the exercises. Mm-hmm.